everybody there? Can you hear me? Great. I'm just getting my slide set up and I'll wait for everyone to join in. Mm -hmm. Hello. I'm going to wait a few more minutes because it's not even time to start yet, but I'm glad to see you, Chris. Hello. Thanks for coming out. Yes, Rachel, I'm fine. And look, there's five people in here. I would love it if people could introduce themselves. It makes me feel happy when I know that there's an audience. Look, I'm letting my hair out. It's time for me to be in presentation mode. Chris is the one who's saying hello, but I see you five other eyeballs. <laughs> Rachel, I miss you. <laughs> we need to talk. Mm hmm Everyone sees a little Taylor Swift there. I'm going to wait like one more minute. Keep my energy up. Keep your energy up. Glad Chris can hear me. That's the only person so far. I mean, like, let's, let's just say it. Chris, you're going to be the one that gets the most value because you're the one schmoozing with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All righty. I see seven eyeballs. I'm waiting for you people. Okay, doke. Eight eyeballs. We're getting there. Group is coming in. Okay, core value. It is a juicy topic. And the reason I'm going to wait another minute is because once I get started, it's hard to stop. Nine people, when I get to 10, and if I don't, in the next minute, I'll start anyway. But when I get to 10 people, you will be my 10. Oh, my gosh, 10 people. Hello, everybody. So I'm Zoe, and I am the, the CEO of Schmooze Media, which is a social marketing agency located here in Toronto. And I started the agency six years ago. And I've listed here some reasons why you should listen to me when it comes to core values and integrity. Um, I built this company on my own core values. And... Before I started Schmooze, I was a kindergarten teacher. So I have never worked at a big agency. The only person I've ever worked for is a, a, a school principal. And my goal is always to say, am I making choices when running my company that are in line with my core values? And I constantly do work on my core values and I've listed them below. And, and what I want to talk to you about today is how, you know, icky it can feel to make a business decision that means you have to ask someone for money. and how you know you can say i need to grow my business i need to find revenue opportunities i need acquisition but what is the footprint in the relationship i really want to build during this time so i i focus on kindness meaningful growth that means not just growing for the sake of growing but growing because it matters and helps people transparency learning and community and i want to just show you what that means in real life in action so for me uh, this is a, sort of a snapshot of what's been going on for me during this COVID time. I, I run Schmooze. I have 10 full-time employees and 20 part-time employees. And my goal was to not have to lay anyone off. As soon as I knew that digital marketing was going to be an important, active, essential business for a lot of other businesses, I made it a goal to not lay anyone off. And I made it a goal to try and hire more. So I've hired one new staff in the last uh, couple of weeks. And I'm hoping to be able to grow more. Um, and on top of that, I wrote a children's book. Uh, it's called ABC Stay Home With Me. And all the proceeds go to the home front, which is a charitable organization I started. And I, I hope you can see that these are choices I've made because of who I am and what is meaningful to me. I have a two-year-old daughter and I have an English degree and I love writing and, and beautiful art. Um, but also it's in line with helping people, helping the world and and moving money around you know I, I get to feature 13 canadian illustrators in creating this book and they all then have an additional resume piece 
So I'm really, really driven by, by these types of things. And if you look back one page at my at my core values, that is how I am making de decisions. Thank you, Osman. I really appreciate it. I adore what I do. And um, we're about to be uh, pu published and listed in Indigo. And, and that's like, this is a project I started three weeks ago. Um, we've raised over $8,000. And this is not like a brag session for Zoe. This is, this is me living my core values and how that can help people understand you and connect with you is really important. The other thing we're doing at Schmooze is we're helping to nominate a business or social enterprise in need. Um, clients who can pay full price are going to be sponsoring and supporting businesses that need support and growing. And this is who I am at my core. And I intend to continue embodying them in every business decision I make. And with the companies who I work with, I th they need to buy into the fact that core values matter and that they can really lead to long-term amazing relationships with people. So I wanna do a little bit of a looking at a case study and a couple of case studies. And this is really interesting for me because I started this case study three, like a few years ago, really. And I'll, I'll take a look. And again, I'm not picking on Bobette and Bell. They're a delicious bakery. On the slide on one side is a year and a half ago. And on the, the right-hand side, it is um, about six months ago. And then in on, on this page here is what they've done since COVID. And what I always ask when I look at content and when I read a bio and I, I really try and dive into that brand and understanding the value that they're creating, I sort of ask this, this question, could they have done more to make me feel connected? Do I feel connected to them? So at the time where I took the screen grab, Babette and Bell had said, we're closing for now, but we'll see you soon. And a lot of people, when, they, when they've when they seen this um, this example, they said, yeah, they probably could have done more. Even if they were closed, they probably could have gone back to who they are at their core, and maybe they could have done uh, cooking recipe videos. And again, I haven't looked at this in a week or two, so I don't know what updates they've made, but these are the types of questions I want you to start asking yourself as you look at your brand a year ago on social media, six months ago on social media, and where you are now. Are you adding value? I'm gonna show you the Toronto Raptors now. And again, this is a really small slide, so it's hard to see, but I'm gonna walk you through it. On the side where the picture is of a basketball in white, that is before the championships. And they have a call to action that says, come to our Twitter channel. And what's so interesting about that is that you're on Instagram, but they want you to go to Twitter. That call to action on Instagram stays true throughout all the different times of, of, of these three images. So this one with the red basketball is during, uh, is during the playoffs. And the one on the right is after they've won. Every time they ask people to go to Twitter. And I want to take a pause and say, why do you think that is? Anyone have a guess or a thought about why they're asking people to go to Twitter? And if you don't, I'm like I'm a former teacher. So if, if I don't see responses in the next minute, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like, okay. No one has responded. Instant feedback. Thank you, Chris. Chris the best. Um, so Chris said instant feedback. So it's a sports team. Twitter, live live conversations are happening in a way that doesn't work on Instagram. So what, what you can say about the Toronto Raptors is they know where conversations are happening and they're going there. That's incredibly smart. Throughout the playoffs, they say become an insider and they provide a second link and a second call to action. So I was really curious to look back again at this live case study and see what they're doing during COVID. And I'm going to show you. So again, this was a couple of weeks ago, but they were doing videos of the Raptors playing music and they did a blog post where people were uh, saying like, hey, let's celebrate the champions because we miss the fact that we're not playing basketball right now. When I did a search, I tried to find their core values somewhere. And this is a very big brand. And again, I'm not picking on them, but I'm, I'm looking for opportunities to understand them better and feel connected. Why am I going to spend my time looking at their feed over somebody else's? Yeah, so they did some like pretty trendy posts. There's a, a cartoon of a, of a basketball player in a bathtub at the bottom there. But I kept thinking, don't like aren't the aren't the Raptors really into helping kids learn? Like, couldn't they be doing like a whole uh, meet the Raptors at their home and do a exercise with your kids? Like, and 
and I don't, I'm not part of their team um, in terms of their marketing, but these are the questions I was asking. Could they have done more? Could I have felt more connected to them? And this isn't about selling tickets. This is about building community and about demonstrating the value you want to give to people. Then I looked at Canva. And for those of you who don't know, this is a little bit of a plug for Canva because it's a free graphic design tool. And again, a year and a half ago, a year ago, um, you can see that they have, you know, they're using their templates. The call to action in that in that bio is saying, tell us your Canva love story, which is like a request for user generated content. Um, so they're saying, use our app, post it on social media and use that hashtag so we can follow it. What were they doing now? They have made a whole new call to action initiative called Stop the Spread Templates. They have created a graphic line free for people to use to encourage social distancing. Is it clear what they value? To me, the answer is yes. And this was furthered by the fact that when I searched for them, unlike the other first two brands, I was able to see their core values. And I'm going to read them to you because it's too small of a screen. But here they are. Be a force for good. Empower others. Pursue excellence. Be a good human. And make complex things simple. The last one is set crazy big goals. And I can see, and I don't know about you, hopefully you can indicate with a, with a yes or something in the chat. But I can see those core values coming to life. In the, in the content that they're creating. So hopefully you agree. I am not seeing very many yeses. Um, let me see, let me see. Yes, thank you, Elan. And thank you, Kathy, and, and all these lovely people responding. But yes, you can see Canva is demonstrating these values that they have laid out clearly on their website. And just like I said in the beginning, where learning and community building and transparency are important to me, I'm gonna go right back to the beginning of my presentation and remind you about who I am and what I'm doing. The home front, children's books. Um, I talk all the time about the struggles I'm having as a business owner. I'm thinking about other business owners. This is not a show that I'm putting on. This is a checklist that's a guidepost for me. Am I being kind? Is my content demonstrating kindness? Am I showing that I care about meaningful growth and not growth for the sake of growth? These are the questions I ask myself. So now what I want to do, and maybe I'll take a pause. Does anyone have any questions at this point? Thank you, Jessica. I agree they had a very clear pivot. And thank you, Larry, for the yes. Goodness gracious, you guys are lovely. Before I move into helping you do this yourselves, I just want to make sure you're okay with me to continue since I can't see your faces, which I love to do. I love faces. Like I want to actually talk to all of you. Um, I'm ready to move forward and help you do this with your brand. So hopefully you're ready. And, uh, you know, the teacher and me, yes, please continue. Yes, Larry, thank you. We have, we do, we all have them, but they may not be very vocal. And this, this is really a guidepost activity that really helps you make decisions about your business, but also about how you want to live your life. So what I always start with is helping people to define their ideal audience. And I want people to be thinking about who that ideal audience is. Now, people, when I, when I talk about this, people say, well, Zoe, everyone is my ideal audience. And I'm like, Okay, well, let's just take a look at your back end and see, is everyone your top 10% of customers? Because the content and value you're going to create for the person in the, you know, the, the, the hipster in his knapsack and his hat is going to be very different than the value you create than for the young gentleman with the, with the, the, the I mean, the gentleman with the tea. Um, similarly, you're not going to create the same content for this lovely bikini laden woman than you are for the woman practicing yoga. They're a different age group. They have different interests. And this, 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 I really wanted you guys to pause and think about this. So who are you creating content for? And again, stop thinking about who is your product for and think about who the content is for. Because that's, that's a huge distinction to make. How do you stand out as a brand when everyone is sharing the same core, but they're not? Because it's, it's I mean, like, oh my gosh, what a great question. Um, 
oh, here, I had to get comfy. My mom told me I shouldn't get comfy on these calls. And I was like, that, no. She's like, it looks weird when you cross your legs in the middle of the call, but this is who I am, okay? So how do you stand out? I, let's just, I'm gonna take that question in and I wanna just work on it for one second. We'll, we'll get there, I promise. Oh, so much to capture. Oh, oh, hold on, now I'm lost, there we go. Everyone wants to please everyone. I want you to stop and think about that top 10%. And two or three audience groups within that top 10%. When I finally looked at this within my business, I point the age, the needs, all these things about this one group that's within my top 10% of successful customers. The more specific you can get, the better. I'm going to really explain that. Imagine your business is a holistic healthcare product. Your best seller is bamboo dental floss. Okay, I just made this up. It's not a real case study. Your ideal audience after studying your top 10% of active customers, is someone who works in a sector that focuses on environmental impact. Huh, how interesting. That's already. People would say, that's it, that's my audience. People in the environment, in the, in the, in the, in a sector who works in the environmental impact area. No, they might go even more specific. 25 to 45 year old women who are entrepreneurs in environmentalism. Oh, Zoe, look how specific that is. No, not specific enough. Good. 40 to 45-year-old women who are CEOs or COOs of environmentally related businesses. They have no kids at home and they value helping the world. That is a specific audience for your bamboo dental floss product. <laughs> I'm just going to check if there's any comments here so far. Hi. Um, so what I, what I want to focus on here is that this good description is one of the three ideal audiences. You can come up with a second group. That, that bad example, 25 to 45, good could be 40 to 45, 35 to 40, and 25 to 30. Those are three separate audiences, not one. Hopefully people are following me here. I'm going to continue because this is where it gets juicy. If you are working through this with me right now, what I want you to do is I want you to think about that key audience member. And I want you to think about that, that, that even if it's, I'm gonna use the example I shared with you in the last slide, but I want you to build out one of their concerns or challenges right now that has nothing to do with your product or service. This is, this is like the moment where selling and social really divide, because you're not saying, Look at me, 20% off. I'm amazing. Here's a discount code. No, you're not talking. You're actually serving them and adding value to them. Again, with core values as your guidepost, but we'll get there again. This is, this is the detailed stuff, okay? And I, I built out this example. I'm going to walk you through it. So we already know that audience number one is the 40 to 45-year-old woman who is the CEO or COO of an environmental business. She has no kids at home and she values helping the world. Here is the deep problem. It's not about her teeth and dental floss. This woman is feeling frustrated because she lives alone and is still employed right now. It feels like people have less empathy for the single employed people right now. She wants to make sure her mom friends feel supported, but it doesn't mean that what she's thinking and feeling right now doesn't matter. Also, she's fed up of toilet paper jokes. All she can hear right now when she hears about toilet paper is about wasted packaging and wasted paper from people making stupid toilet paper content. That is her deep problem. Her not deep problem, does my dental floss have a good environmental footprint? <laughs> she really needs to start thinking about what problem, your, your product solves a problem, but then your brand can solve other problems that really connect deeply with the people and who they are. So this is my question to you. When you're able to step back and think about adding true value to each company, it becomes, to each customer, it becomes a lot easier to live those core values. What I really want you to do is feel proud of what you put out there and know what that other people are getting value from it too. So I'm just going to go back to that example. And, and I feel like, Sajad, I haven't totally answered your question still because in a 30-minute presentation, there's only so much I can do. But, but what I really want to, to, for you guys to focus on is what are your core values? 
What problems are somebody having right now for real? And how can you use those core values as a way to create content that adds value to them? And it's a lot of uses of the word value. I think I think the easiest thing for me to do at this point is to answer some questions because this this is a, this is this is a hard topic to cover in a short period of time. So so Jad, I'll talk start with your question, and maybe you want to come on and talk with me if you're here. I would love to invite you if that's allowed. That oh yes, thank you. Did it work? Are you coming? Oh no. True value is about product relationship and connecting yourself with customers with the same value as you. It says waiting for approval. Well, that's just silly annoying. I don't know what to do about that. But I would agree with you that that oh, man, I would love Sajad. It's not working. Um, so I'm not gonna worry about that. I, I, Larry, I would love to say that you're absolutely right and that when you look at that list of core values and you look at that list of problems that those, that person is having beyond your product, you can create a content mix that's far greater than a content mix that is just all pushing for your own product. Um, so, John, do you think you can try one more time? Because I don't know why it's uh, not working. And then I would love to say yes to you because I just can't click. Um, does anyone else have any other questions while I try and get that to work with Sajad? Oh, okay. Probably disabled feature by the organizers. It's also about alignment with your employees. Absolutely. So Larry, one of the things that I do in every piece of content that goes out, and perhaps I should just share a content calendar with you guys. Um, we don't just say, hey, what's what's like, oh, we're gonna do an inspiration post. We're actually also asking the question, what value does this add to my customers? And then we're able to write that in. What value does this add to their community at large? So we're not just thinking about the, the one person's problem, we're thinking about the value add to everyone. And that's what I'm actually gonna do right now since we have a few extra minutes and I wanna keep adding value to you guys based on the interest that this conversation is getting. And that would be, to show you a content calendar. So let me just bring that up right now. And if anyone else has questions, I would love to answer them. But I think the best thing I can do is show you a content calendar. Da -dun -da -dun -dun -dun. Okay. Let me just share this screen with you, everybody. All right, I'm gonna share the screen with you. So this is an example of a client who, and I'm going, it's so hard to see, I almost want to get rid of myself. Um, you can see here, and maybe you can't, gosh, this, this is a harder technology than I thought it would be. Essentially, in this content calendar, you can see from left to right, we have different columns set up. We say post type, which is pretty typical. It's the type of post we have. We have a conversation starter. We have a testimonial. We have a call to action to book. These are all very normal things that people use in social media. The second tab talks about the ideal audience and we get very specific there. We're saying millennial mom and the goal of this post is to engage, empower and educate them. So we're looking for that in our results. Um, and, 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 and what we're doing is we're really trying to say, and then this, the next column um, says, I don't know why that's actually been closed a little bit. Oh, um, here we go. Core value embodied. So we're going through each type of post and we're making sure that there's an opportunity to cover each of those guide posts. So in the case of Schmooze, I would be saying, we have a conversation starter and it embodies kindness. We have a reviewing testimonial for millennial moms to provide value and give them the opportunity to buy in. And this one is in line with my value of learning. So we're really gonna be thinking about that in every single post that we do. Why don't all companies operate in this realm? Larry, what 
What a what a great question, and thank you as well for your question, Jean. It's, it's a really interesting thing. When I hire people, what I look for is cultural fit as as well as skills. So we we assume actually that skills are like if they say they have the skills, it's going to be pretty clear if they have the skills or not, and um, we're going to learn that pretty quickly based on the work that they do. Uh, for us, cultural fit is everything. So what I would do in an interview, and what I do in an interview is. Uh, say, here are our core values. And if you looked at the Schmooze website, you'll see that we're all about core values. I want to understand what these core values mean to you. The interesting thing about skills and experiences in the world are that if you can't take those experiences and apply them through your skills, I don't really care what skills you have. It's really about who you are as a person and, and how, how you embody what you can do as that skill. Skills and experience mean nothing if they don't fit in my team. I completely agree. Um, I uh, Do I have any tips to get us over the mental hurdle of committing to the top 10%? Alan, can you explain what that means, mental hurdle of committing to the top 10%? Oh, my gosh, Alan, I really want to let you into this conversation, but it won't let me. It's very annoying. Um, so I my answer to that question about, having tips to get over the mental hurdle. I want to understand that better. But what I think you're trying to say is um, the top 10% of customers aren't necessarily your best customers. They might be the revenue generating customers. So what you want to start doing is saying in that top 10%, are those top 10% aligned with my values? So when I sort of did a cleanup of my clients and, and looked at, at, you know, who do I enjoy working with? And is that enjoyment aligned with those values that I have? Um, I don't want to work with companies that don't don't eat, you know, don't drink the same Kool-Aid as me. And it's not, I don't, I no longer feel afraid to let go of the companies that don't buy into what I believe in because they just aren't my people. And that's okay. Um, what I've found is the more I lean into those core values and the more I, you know, go ahead and publish a book and say, you know, I was a kindergarten teacher and Learning is so important to me. And if you want a flashy company that's going to roll out the red carpet for you, that's not my company. And I'm going to put that 10% of margin that could have been, um, you know, champagne dinner and a red carpet. And instead, I'm going to put it into my marketing accelerator program to help businesses who don't um, who don't have the ability to to spend money on marketing right now. Uh, that's way more important to me than 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 being fancy for the people who who think I should be appearing and behaving in a certain way. That's who I am. I don't believe in performing according to society's rules. I believe in adding value, truly, truly adding value. Um, so people who choose schmooze know what they sign up for. And if they don't want that experience, there's a million other marketing agencies who hopefully know who they are and what they stand for. And hopefully they're attracting people to them. Um, I, I don't want their customers and that's okay. So you have to be able to let go. It's not about the contract. It becomes about the relationship. I completely agree. And this is something that happened to me today. Um, someone, I had, I had a talk with the client and he said, Zoe, I trust you so much. Can you just make the decisions for me? And I was like, huh, I'm extremely uncomfortable with that. I'm your marketing agency, not your business operations team. Like I, this is uncomfortable. And we had a long conversation about it and we talked about values. And he said, you know that at the end of the day, my goals are to be seen. Like I want to know that my legacy is is includes these things. And I need you to make those decisions. And I I, I trust you with those decisions because we understand each other. And it, honestly, this sounds terrible. And I mean this with all the love and respect to that person in my heart. The money that he's going to spend with me is probably going to grow more and more as the trust grows. And something I, I learned when I was an angsty teenager was that trust takes years to build and seconds to destroy. And the best value we can give to people is their belief that we are what we say we are and that our company is being run the way we say we're running it. And that's why for me, social media marketing has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with acquisition. It has to do with retention. And people get so like, I need new customers. Give me new customers. And I'm like, no, you need to demonstrate continued value to the ones who already love us and already get it. So you really need to use those core values as a way to guide you in understanding your best customers and continuing to offer value to them because that's all you need. That's 
That's all you need. And I know that sounds fluffy and silly, but the money is there if you if you recognize the value that you can truly provide to those people. Thank you so much, Alon. This is becoming really clear and easy when we just apply our company values to the values of our customer. And 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 that's like the, the biggest fear I had to let go of was being able to say, like, oh my God, this person doesn't get it. And now I'm upset because I lost the deal. But I don't, I don't, I my goal is to teach people that relationships matter and that you will find your people through the people who already get it. So that's why retention and referral is so, so important. And, and that goes, that's not just about customer retention, that's also about employee retention. So I have 10 full-time staff and very, very low turnover because we are all driven and clear on those core values. I award my team, actually the team awards each other with core values awards every month. I, I put the bill on the gift card. This is how I run my company. It's not it's not some marketing gimmick. It's truly just who I am. Um, any other questions while we're here? Thanks, Chris. That's such a lovely thing to say. I want to tell you that my book, all the proceeds are going to the home front, which is a charitable organization I started about nine weeks ago after my daughter got sick on our flight home from Florida. So we started this pandemic with sickness and fear and scariness. And I started the homefront.ca and we have raised about $30,000 and and then this book so far, we've sold 1,500 copies and all the proceeds are going to the home front. Um, if any of you have children, I would just love, this is 13 Canadian illustrators who have done the work here. And I, I know this sounds like a marketing plug, um, but this is my heart, not, not getting money from people. The money is going to come because I am who I am and I know that I can create meaningful work. So think about the meaning that you can create. Think about giving back. Think about giving back in a way that's true to your brand. And if you can't give back, then be transparent about it. That's okay. You might not have money right now and that's okay. It's 315. I wish that I could have had this as a Zoom call so I could see your beautiful faces because there's 22 of you, which means that you actually watched me. So thank you very much for your attention. I am always here to consult and talk. We do core values workshops at Schmooze. So if you have a team and you need to get clarity about what you stand for and why you stand for it, then that can really help you get some great direction in your marketing and in your business at large, to be honest. So I am here anytime and I would love, love, love to chat. Just wait, because I have more ideas that are going to be launching soon. So more to come in the future. Enjoy your day, everybody. Goodbye.